Shalom, Yasharaba. First and foremost, we want to give all praise, glory, and honor to Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashem, Rakakodash. Double honor to our apostles, to our great millstone. Peace and bless to the elect of Israel. All right. You know, and basically, we're just going to get into the topic of the physician and also the comforter, which pretty much those two things coincide with each other. All right. They basically line up. And this is what we need because when you look at the condition of Jake, when you look at the condition of the 12 tribes of Israel, so called Negroes, Latinos, Hispanics, Native and Seminole Indians, they're sick. They're mentally sick. They're sick in the mind. Okay? Our people are spiritually gone. Okay? They have different goals and aspirations in this world, and they've been far removed from their culture. Okay, they've been far removed from the Bible. All right, from their heritage, from who they are. Okay, and they're into all these different philosophies. And they're wallowing in their sins. Okay? And that's why we under the curses. And the only one that can remove the curses is the Lord himself. Okay? And when he comes back, when he makes his second coming, he's going to really remove these curses from off of us. Okay? But see, until then, we have to deal with it. And we have to do this work according to the best of our ability and keep the laws, statutes, and commandments. All right? But the point is, we're dealing with how the Lord is going to heal Israel. You have a lot of people, they want to talk about the community, helping the community, helping our people, you know? Which really, when you read the Bible, the Lord is only dealing with the elect. Okay, so it's not our job to feed the homeless, you know, uh, have like, uh, you know, you know, charities and, you know, pretty much <clears throat> looking out for so-called black people, as they say. Community service. Yeah, co yeah, community service. All right. You, when you come back to this truth, you realize the Lord is looking for a small number. Okay. So you're not going to see us out there fighting to wake up the masses of Israel. You're not going to see us. Going door to door, like a uh, 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 one body uh, of Yahushai in Dallas and uh, in Sakari. You're not gonna see us do that because y'all acting like Jehovah's Witnesses, man. All right, we ain't supposed to do that. This how the Lord is gonna heal Israel. All right, you got it out. It's the Book of Jeremiah, chapter thirty, verse twelve. For thus said the Lord, Yahweh by Shimei Yahushai, thy bruise is incurable and thy wound is grievous. Yeah, man, our condition. It tells you in Isaiah, the whole head is sick and the whole heart faint. From the sole of the foot, even up to the crown of the head. The whole nation is through. All right? So our bruise is incurable. What's that bruise? Basically slavery. Our condition. There hasn't been any progress. You know? Our people haven't evolved. And really, right now, it's worse than it's ever been. Mm -hmm. You know, because see, back during slavery, I mean, you know, actual, you know, physical slavery, you know, us, uh, you know, working for Esau out in the field, which today we're basically doing the same thing. It's a little bit different, all right? It's more industrialized now. But when you were directly under Esau, under Massa, you know, pretty much we, we were... Uh, we were still unified in certain aspects. You know, you, you had a uh, a close closer connection to your people, you know, in, in some instances, all right? Even though you was divided and sold to different plantations, you know, and it, it was a lot of us, man, they, they were still willing to, uh, still willing to fight during that time. But see, now, it, well, it tells you how, but basically, the enemy will put a yoke of iron up on our necks until he have destroyed us. And when you go back during slavery, you know, which uh, it primarily started, well, if you want to deal with the whole nation Israel, going back to the northern tribes, slavery started around like the, uh, the early 1500s. Well, you know, dealing with when uh, Cristobal Colon came to the Americas, you know, 1492, that's when it started. But the involvement of Judah, Benjamin, and Levi, that started around, you know, 1619. That's when the bulk of the slaves came to the Americas. But the point is, when we, you know, uh, landed shore in the Americas, 
Esau, he beat our heritage out of us, man. And he actually put a, a physical yoke of iron on your neck. And we had chains on us. But he said he would put a yoke of iron upon, upon thy neck until he had destroyed thee. So why don't we have yokes of iron on our necks now? We've been destroyed. So your bruise is incurable and your wound is grievous. The wounds of slavery. You know, hey, the parable of the rich man Lazarus, it tells you how Lazarus, he laid at the rich man's gate full of sores. Being sick. What's those sores? Evidence of slavery. That's why we can't get too caught up in the society, man. You can't be distracted like that. Remember where the hell you at, man. That's why the Lord deprives you of certain things. That's why you gotta, you gotta stay in a certain spirit so you don't get drawn back into the matrix because here it is now, our people don't even know they're slaves. See, at least during that time, you know, you know, the earlier period, you know, uh, in America, at least during that time, you knew that you was in slavery. Now, Jake Mentality, I ain't no damn slave. My people, my people ain't, ain't in slavery, you know? Nigga, you still a slave, and it's even worse now because you don't even know it, you know? A slave that don't know he's a slave, that's a worse slave than one that does. See, at least we know. That's why this truth is the comforter. We're being comforted. I would rather know than, than, than to uh, be left in the dark, man. As that saying goes, uh, ignorance is bliss, which is why most of our people are about to die, man. You know? You got something else? Kind of, I got one to prove uh, uh, what you just said. Uh... And we in serious times, man. All right, see, now, hey, uh, you can't do a lot of different shit that uh, you used to do, man. Okay? The Lord wants to remind you where you at. Okay? Go ahead. Out. Okay. And uh, then after that, we go back to Jeremiah. Come on, yeah. Yeah, because, uh, you know, you will have certain moments when things will be going, quote, unquote, good for you. You have certain days where it ain't as bad as other days, but at the same time, dealing with our condition, man, you see one wrong, th wrong, one wrong thing, man. You will see Jake doing some crazy stuff. You will see our people doing some just bugged out off stuff, and that changed the whole spirit of how you felt, man. Because if we're, if we're supposed to be enjoying our lives here, you wouldn't have to deal with that. You wouldn't see our people in this condition that they're in, Okay? And, and there will be no more evidence of slavery. Come. Those wounds will be gone completely. Come. Okay, you ready? Come. All right, this is the book of John, chapter 8, verse 32. And it says, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Yeah, so this is what's going to heal us. Mm -hmm. This is the physician, and this is the comforter. You shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. This, this is going to free your mind. From captivity. Come. Because you're, you're a mental slave. This is going to set you free. This is what freed us, man. This, this is what's going to liberate us. It tells you how, dealing with the curses, that uh, we got sold over here to uh, North America, spiritual Egypt, for slave men and slave women, and no man shall buy us, meaning redeem us. So what is going to redeem us? Or who? Who is going to redeem us? Yahweh Shai. That's why his name means he is the deliverer. Or he is salvation. He saves. Matthew 1 and 21. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shall call his name Yahweh Shai, for he shall save his people from their sins. Showing you the Lord only came for us. We're the only ones under the curses. You know? The Lord said how he came to redeem them that were under the law. You know? Redeem us from the curse of the law. It tells you that in the book of Galatians. All right? Go ahead, out. All right. So when you have a shot, you know, said that you should know the truth and the truth shall make you free. All right. Listen to how uh, uh, this Jake responded. It said, they answer him. We be Abraham's seed and we're never in bondage to any man. Yeah. That's how you Jake's out of day, man. That's that shows that that's our people right there, man. You got Jake that say that, man, especially you, you Tom niggas. I ain't no that, pick yeah, I ain't no pick cotton. You got that mentality. <laughs> a, a lot of Jakes that basically uh, have so-called good lives here, which really you don't, and you a slave. But let's say it may be a Jake that owns some land down south. 
Maybe it's a Jake. He married an Edomite woman. Whatever the case may be, he has it. He has a look good, you know. He makes more money than other Jakes. You know, he got that big promotion at the job, you know. So, yeah, he got that mentality. I ain't no slave. Well, oh, Lil Wayne. You remember that shit uh, going back with uh, Lil Wayne? You know what I'm saying? They was uh, asking him about the, those different shootings that's going on, you know, by the cops. And uh, and also, how does he feel about the Black Lives Matter movement? You know what I'm saying? And, and he was like, yeah, I ain't worried about that. I'm, I'm black. Look where I'm at. I'm roughly paraphrasing what he said, but he showed that he's a Tom nigga. You know? But the point is, you can't escape these damn curses the Lord put upon us, man. Mm -hmm. And that's why the Lord takes Jake out horrifically, man. You know, you would die poor. You didn't sold it out. You know, you didn't sacrifice your mother or your father or your close old friend or one of your cousins, you know? But then at the same time, you get fucked over in the end, man. You know, by Esau. You can't escape it, man. All right? But hey, can you read that part again, though? It says, uh, they answer him, we be Abraham's seed and were never in bondage to any man. Yeah, that, that, those are niggas, man. Mm -hmm. That's how I just talk today instead of accepting the truth that we still in slavery, man. They didn't, hey, Jake didn't even want to accept the fact that uh, Yahweh Shai was the Messiah, okay? And he came to re redeem them you know, from the curse of the law. You can't keep all the laws perfectly. But also, he came to redeem them from that Roman captivity. And guess what? We under the Roman rule today, man. Oh. It's the same people ruling over us, the Edomites. Oh. You know? Hey, look up Edom on uh, wikipedia.org. It tells you how the, the Roman Empire is Edom. Same people back today ruling over us. Go ahead out. How say is thou, ye shall be made free. Yahweh Shah answered them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, whosoever committed sin is the servant of sin. Yeah. And that's all the people do today, man. It's please the flesh. Mm -hmm. That's all Jake care about, man. But see, that's why most of our people ain't going to make it. Because it, it tells you how they don't come to the light, lest their deeds shall be reproved. Jake don't want to be corrected. You know, and then, especially by their own people, they got that mentality, man, I saw you grow up. You know what I'm saying? You used to do some of the same stuff I'm doing now. You know? And then Jake got that mentality, well, well something going to kill you eventually. For you, for you Jakes that want to still smoke cigarettes, you know, you still want to do whatever wickedness you're doing. Well, I'm going to die of something. Hey, the, the scriptures tell you you shouldn't tempt your how about shooting out shot. You know? But the point is, dealing with the physician and dealing with the comforter, this is what we have now. It is known as the Holy Spirit. Okay? This is the beginning of, of the Lord redeeming us from these curses, man. And, and healing our wounds. Because we need it. We sick, man. We all messed up. You know? Here it is. And we in the truth. But you still get wicked thoughts. You know? You still think about uh, uh, past iniquities that you committed. You know? Praying to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai that uh, your sins are forgiven you. So we, we really just need to get redeemed from this captivity. And we in the land where all this shit took place at. So you're going to constantly have memories of it. All right? What happened to your ancestors? This can't be erased, man. That's something you can't get rid of. The only way that's going to be made right is if this place get destroyed. And if the same people that put us in captivity, they go into the same captivity that, that uh, we went to. Or went into, excuse me. Except it's worse. It's going to be worse than what we went through. All right? Go ahead, I. Back in Jeremiah chapter uh, 30, verse uh, 13, it said, There is none to plead thy cause. That thou yeah, ain't nobody standing up for you. Mm -hmm. Ain't nobody helping you. Ain't nobody pleading your cause. You know, who's standing up for you? Really? Talking about the injustices that your, that, uh, your people suffer daily. Nobody doing that, man. All right? Really, the other nations, man, they've been capitalizing off the curses ever since we've been over here. And they're doing it even more so now. And, and you, Jake, just love to have it. So you love to lie down and let them walk all over you, man. Like I tell you in Isaiah. They walk all over your ass, man. Selling you, uh, you know, bad meat, unlawful meat, selling you cigarillos, 
You know? Everything inspired. E- yeah, everything inspired. Oh, and Ishmael and Elam, man, they bad about that. Mm-hmm. I'm talking about they ain't let nothing go to waste. They don't keep that shit up in there because in their mind, you're going to buy it. Buy some stuff that's going to kill you, man. Shit been expired for like six months. And it's still up in there, man. You know? But you know, the thing is, they going to pay for all this stuff. They not getting away with that. All right? But the point is, man, you know, you Israelite men need to have a backbone, man. Okay? And you, and you should want to be free. You got to want to be free in your mind. You just want to stay here, man. You don't want to be healed. All right? You want to stay sick. And those of you that want to stay sick, you're going to die sick. That's why a two-thirds of our people, they're called reprobates. A, rep- a reprobate person is, is a person that's void of judgment. They sick, man. You know? They're uh, spiritually retarded. And that's our people, man. That's why two-thirds, they got to die, man. They got to go. Okay? Go ahead, I- it said, there is none to plead thy cause that thou mayest be bound up. Thou hast no healing medicines. Yeah, ain't nothing helping us, man. You know, and it doesn't matter if Esau, you know, handing out a couple crumbs to a few jakes, giving him a few million, or even making him a billionaire, you know, like uh, Jay-Z, you know what I'm saying, or giving him, giving him a few mil, like 50 cent. They ain't helping our people, man. No. Those are just a few sellout jakes, man, that, that uh, they, they wrote their name in blood to get that type of money, all right? Mm-hmm. What about the rest of our people? You know? Ain't nothing gonna help us, man. It says we have no healing medicines. The government can't help you. You know? It doesn't matter how many different so-called government programs our people own. That's really, that's meant to make your wounds worse. Because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. you gotta keep trusting in Esau. It's not, it's not making you uh, self-established. Mm-hmm. You know? Because, hey... There's a lot of power in uh in self, so to speak. Mm-hmm. The Lord dividing the nations, man, making the nations uh separate, especially dealing with Israel. We're supposed to be a sovereign nation, man. Mm-hmm. He wants us separated from everybody, man. That's why in our kingdom we're gonna dwell in safety alone. Mm-hmm. All right. But the point is, ain't nobody standing up for y'all, man. Really, but you know something though? Through the spirit of how about Shai, we're standing up for Jake, man. This is the best thing. That ever happened to our people, man. This is the best thing for our people. Is this right here? This truth. Okay. Go ahead. It's labor of love. Yes, yeah, the labor of love. Yep. And then, like you said, uh, ain't no healing medicine, man. You know that's why you had the Black Panthers, the NCAACP. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, 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 Plantation Christian. All right. All these. It's 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 seventeen churches in one Jake neighborhood, man. No healing medicines, man. No matter how much Jake drink. No matter what drug Jake, Jake get on, no matter what degree yeah. Jake get, no matter uh, what financial, all right, uh, 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 status Jake get, mm-hmm. there's no healing, all right, uh, for our wounds, man. Other out, outside of be how about she mouth shot, man. Yeah, yeah. So dealing with those wounds, it's like a void. Mm-hmm. It's like a big void, and the only thing that can fill that void is the truth. Like you said, Jake, you know, uh, they have uh, drug abuse problems. They're addicted to different things, man. That's it's really making your wounds worse. You ain't going to escape it, no matter how high you get. <laughs> you, yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, yeah. Hey, you get sacrificed, man. You know, you, you sacrifice uh, your life, literally. You know, to make it up out of here, you, you just got yourself uh, killed for nothing, man. Okay. You know, you can be at the club uh, chasing uh, Keisha all you want to, chasing these different black women. You know what I'm saying? They don't matter how many women you pop, you still got that big void and it can't nothing fill it. Uh-huh. Except this truth. Uh-huh. You know? Go ahead, I- Verse 14. All thy lovers have forsaken thee. Oh, you know who your lovers are? These damn false gods. Oh, plantation Christianity is one of them. You know? And, and the man that's responsible for that is... Uh, the self-proclaimed white man. The devil himself, Esau, okay? So all your lovers have forgotten you, all right? These other nations, they ain't looking for you, man. Ain't nobody checking for Jake, man. No. Don't nobody even want to go. They don't even want to go down your damn street, man. Go into your neighborhood. People want to stay far away from you, man. You know? And it's an old video. I forget the exact uh, title of it. I can put it on the comment board. But basically, 
you know, it was explaining, you know, why it says uh, why white people are uh, are racist or why they want to be separate from blacks, something to that effect. I forget the exact title, but it goes back during uh, like the basically the uh, the civil rights era. Mm -hmm. You know, I think the video was made in the sixties. But it was it was Jake. He was interviewing these different Edomites, and, and he was asking them their uh, opinions as far as dealing with slavery. You know, um, how they feel about you know blacks in general. You know, the media might be saying Negroes are lazy. They don't work for anything. They don't work hard enough. You know, I don't want to be around them. I don't want my children around them. You know, just, I, hey, man, Esau would dog and Jake out, man. And you think they feel different today? Now they just hide it. See, back then they was open with it. You know, Esau got the same sentiment, man. And see, now you really going to feel it. When Jacob's trouble takes place, that's why you need to get into this uh, comforter and physician. All right, because the truth making you free, hey man, you you free from care about what's about to happen, man. Mm -hmm. Because you let go of these uh, mortal thoughts, you you ain't worried about what what uh, Esau can do to you, man. Because Esau did everything already. I mean, really, is nothing left for Esau to do except do this shit. Because at this point, he has nothing left anyway, but the sword, but but uh, carnality, you know. But, you know, seeking to kill Jacob because he don't got the birthright. That's all Esau got left. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But, hey, you know this truth and this truth making you free. This is what you need, man. And that's why we got to stay plugged into it, you know? Go ahead, up. It said, for I have wounded thee with the wound of an enemy with the chastisement of a cruel one. Which is Esau. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Because thy sins were increased. Why cries thou out for thine affliction? Thy sorrow is incurable for the multitude of thine iniquity. Yeah, yeah. Hey, Jay crying out for their afflictions, man. Mm. Marching, protesting, thinking they're going to get a fair shake after a while. And nothing has worked. It don't matter how many shootings it is. The, the Lord telling you why you're crying. And he telling you why he did it to you. He did it to you. All right? Ultimately, he used Esau, but he did it to you. Mm -hmm. All right? You can't blame it on Satan. The Most High did it to you. He sent the hit. He, yeah, he sent the hit. <laughs> Go ahead, I. And it says, uh, because thy sins were increased, I have done these things unto thee. Therefore, uh, I'm going to skip to 17. Come on, come on. You know, going back to the restoration. Now, this for the elect. Verse 17. For I will restore health unto thee, and I will heal thee. Whoa, the Lord said he's going to restore health unto us. Restore. Which also, that goes into uh, reparations. Can you get the scripture? Uh, it says, repairer of the breach. You look that up. On blue letter. Yeah, man. We're being restored right now. You know? The Lord is, uh, you know, building you up again. You're being restored as a nation with the truth. The Lord is building again the, the uh, tabernacle or the house of David with his truth. With his spirit. And he said it, man. You know, he, he's not going to do it by might. You know, he's going to do it with his spirit, man. All right. So we don't need to physically uh, fight Esau. This truth is doing everything for us, man. OK, but the point is, we're being restored and going back to what the uh, disciples had asked you how was shy about 2000 years ago. Well, that would this time restore again the kingdom to Israel. And it wasn't time yet. This time we will be restored. Hey, dealing with uh, John the Baptist. You know, how Elijah would, would uh, return and restore all things. He didn't do that 2,000 years ago during the time of Yahweh Shai. We knew who we were. We knew who we were at that time. And this time we would need to be restored. And the place where we said unto them, you're not my people. <laughs> all right? That's happening now. Okay? So this truth is the biggest thing going, man. Got you, bro. Go ahead, I'll. This is book of Isaiah, chapter uh, 58, verse 12. And it says, And they that shall be of thee shall build the old waste places. Wait a minute. And they that shall be of thee, your own people. Esau ain't going to help you do it. <laughs> they that shall be of thee, Israelites, shall, shall uh, rebuild or, or repair the old waste places, man. Basically, our nation that was broken up, our people. Jerusalem is a people before it's a place. It tells you that. We can get that in uh in the Maccabees. You know? All right, go ahead out. And it says, 
Thou shalt raise up the foundations of many generations, and thou shalt be called the repairer of the breach. Wait a minute. Hey, so you got to understand, man. Raising up the, the foundation, then it tells you, you can't uh, lay any foundation, but you have a shot. He's on the he's on the only foundation that can be laid, man. You have a shot. He's our rock. He's our foundation. You know, if, if it's if this not standing on you have a shot, it's not gonna work. It, well, it tells you in the Psalms, they did uh build a house, you know, if the Lord didn't build it, they, they labored in vain. You know, it tells you that. All right, go ahead out. It said the repair of breach, the restore of paths to dwell in. Wait a minute. So we call it the repairer of the breach. That's where you get the word reparations from. Can you the definition of uh, reparations? Reparations. Yeah, because we're being repaired, okay? And you, hey, you really think Esau was going to repair us? You know, because Jake want to talk about why we didn't get 40 acres and a mule. If you would have gave every Israelite that, don't you know Esau would have been giving us his kingdom, basically? All right? W which the kingdom belongs to us. But Esau, it, it tells you how, uh, you know, the throne of iniquity, not going to have fellowship, with the throne of the Most High, all right. That shit ain't gonna work, man. You gonna have one nation on top and one nation on the bottom. And Esau knows that, man. Even Abraham Lincoln said that, all right. When you look up one of his racist quotes that he made about Jake, all right. But the point is, man, we're being repaired right now, okay. By way of your shot. he's that foundation. He's building us up, okay. And he's our physician and comforter. All right? So you, you see big things happening on the planet Earth, man. And see, that's why this is the biggest threat. This is the biggest threat. This is why we're going to be the main target during these times. That's why Esau about to come for us. But that's okay. Once again, I got to quote it again. You should know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Once you've freed your mind from this mental captivity we, we've been in, you're going to be all right, man. You know, but see, two thirds, they still caught up into the matrix, man. All right. And it tells you, well, you know, Morpheus has said in that movie, while they're still plugged in, there are enemies. Like Apostle Paul said, they are not our Israel, which are of Israel. So two thirds of our people are the enemy, man. All right. And you got to look at it like that. You know, you got to look at them that way. These are the very same people. They about to hand us over to Esau soon. I don't give a damn if it's your, your mother. If your father, if he's around, your close cousins, old friends from the world, all these people are going to hand you over to Esau. They're still a part of the system, man. Okay? They're all a potential agent. <laughs> they agents of Satan. Okay? Go ahead, Doc. This is the definition for reparations on Google. It said the making of amends for a wrong one has done by paying money to or otherwise helping those who have been wrong. Right? Look, he read now, and it says, "Uh, the compensation for war damage paid by a defeated state." Uh, we get the etymology. Yeah, but the point is, you know, we can't depend on Esau to restore us or repair us. If that was the case, he would have been did it. If that was the case, plantation Christianity would have been successful. But nah, that was to further uh, enslave us. Okay? You know? The Edomite supremacy, man, that was, that was a, a, a big part in making Jake mental slaves. You accepting Esau as your savior? Accepting Esau as your God? Which would justify the slave master in doing to you whatever he wanted to do. You know, in their minds. But see, now you know the truth. You know that Esau ain't the most high. He not the savior. He's not the Israelites. He's not any important uh, uh, figure in the book. You know? But we can tell, tell you who he is. He's the serpent. He's Cain. He's Esau. <laughs> you know? So the point is, man, this is what our people need at this time. All right? They don't need fancy gimmicks. Okay? We need to tell our people the truth, man. Because this was, was going to uh, prepare us for the time to come. You building Jake up. You're fortifying Jake. You know? Go ahead, Doc. 
This is the uh, reparation on etymology.com. It said late 1400s. It says reconciliation. Oh, to reconcile. We've been reconciled to the most high by way of Yahweh Shai. Reconciliation. Go ahead. Act of repairing. Act of repairing. Wait a minute. Did not the brother read in Isaiah? We would be called. We would be called the repairer of the breach. Now, when you look the word breach up, it goes to a broken part. Keep in mind that our nation, the nation of Israel, has been divided. We've been broken up into two separate kingdoms. Going back to uh, after the time period, you know, when King Solomon died. And when his son Rehoboam got the kingdom and he went off and, and, uh, and the kingdom was divided ever since then. You know, and then just ultimately the whole nation being finished, you know, because of our sins. You know, the northern kingdom being cast off first and then the southern kingdom being cast off, you know, ultimately going to captivity. But just during the time period of Yahweh Shai, like I told you in, uh, in Romans chapter 11, the Lord has concluded all of our nation in unbelief so he can have mercy upon all. So he rejected the whole nation. That, that was the purpose of Yahweh Shai coming to redeem the whole nation back or to buy back the whole nation because the whole nation got cast off, but not ultimately. Have the most high cast away his people? The most high forbid. But he turned his back on us, so you can understand. The point is, we're repairing or building up our people. You know? You're building them up again, man. Go ahead, Doc. It says the act of repair, restoration. It's oh, like you read that. <laughs> restoration. We're being restored. Go ahead. It said restore, repair. It says uh, compensation for war damage owed by the aggressor. Esau did aggressive. Yep, yep. because, because uh, slavery, that's an act of war. I mean, and this is hella damage, man. See, and that's another thing. Jake got to remember, this is a time of war, man. This is warfare. We're POWs. And this shit's bad, man. We, we've been removed to the Western Hemisphere. You don't think that's bad? All right? We were not originally living here, man. You know? But, hey, everything's going to be all right now because another synonym of uh, reparation or uh, or restoration is, is dealing with uh, healing, being healed, which goes into the physician. Okay? This is what's doing it, this truth. All right? Go ahead, brother. And it says, And I will heal thee of thy wounds, said the Lord, because they called thee an outcast, saying, This is Zion, whom no man seeketh after. You call the scripture out again? All right, this is Jeremiah 30 and 17. It said, For I will restore health unto thee, and I will. Well, restore, restore and health. <laughs> you know, reparations. Mm -hmm. You know, so we're being repaired, and he's giving us health again. Your, your mind is healthy, you know, healthy. You know, in the word uh, health, it goes into whole. Mm -hmm. So the whole body, in like I said in Isaiah, the whole head being sick and the whole heart faint, the whole nation. But now the whole nation is being healed, beginning with the elect. Right now, all of the elect are being healed. Mm -hmm. Okay? Go ahead, Doc. It said they called thee and it says because they called thee an outcast saying, this is Zion whom no man seeketh after. Look at us. We're all the way in the West. In the Western Hemisphere. We, we've been casted out, man. We're outcasts. We've, we're we're uh, exiles, you know? We've been exiled out the land of Israel. You know, so this was a big uh, war move the Lord, you know, did to uh, Israel, you know? At the same time, now is the time period when he's going to reverse it, mm -hmm. you know? And everything is happening simultaneously, man. Like it tells you in Joel, the third chapter, you know, the Lord said he's going to bring again the captivity of Judah and Jerusalem. Bring again, meaning bring us back to our land. But during that time period, he's bringing World War III, gathering all nations to the valley of Yahweh Shapat, you know, which is over there in the Middle East, which is happening right now, man. Yeah. So Israel is being healed during a time when War, War, World War III is about to get kicked off, you know, during a time period when America is about to get destroyed. That's why the Lord chose to woke us up now. Okay. All right. Go ahead, up. And then since you say uh, the Lord finna reverse it, you know, I'm going to read verse 16, uh, the Jeremiah 30 and 16. 
Therefore, all they that devour thee shall be devoured. Hey, going into uh, hey, Deuteronomy 30 and 7. Mm -hmm. The Lord thy power shall put all these curses upon thine enemies. Go ahead up. It said, and all thy adversaries, every one of them, shall go into captivity. Yeah, so it didn't just say one of them. <laughs> just one nation. Because see, you Edomites, yeah, I think y'all are alone. You're not completely alone. I mean, you're going to be the main culprits. But really... All you other nations gonna get it because y'all all had a hand in, in uh, you know, basically further afflicting Israel. You all had a hand in our captivity, so it's only right that we get all y'all, man. You know, and see, it's gonna be way bigger when it happens than what we're teaching right now. When when the Lord showed His power, when you see Esau and other nations physically in slavery, you're gonna be like. God damn, like, man, the scripture said that, but man, and the Lord, man, when he made it happen, like, you, you just looking at them, and, and they out in the field, you know, scorching hot outside. You can make the heat hotter on them. You got the spiritual power. Hey, man, it's going to be far out, man. Mm -hmm. and, you, and you looking at it, but that's the, the uh, fulfillment of this prophecy right here. Go ahead, out. And it said, uh, and they that spoil thee shall be a spoil, and all that prey upon thee. Will I give for a prey? Yeah, so they're going to be targeted. Right now, we the prey. Right now, we're, we're all worn out. It tells you about Esau, so we're out the saints to the Most High. He's constantly harassing us, you know, demonizing us. Man, our total character around the planet Earth has been diminished. People look at us as niggas all over the planet. That's a reproach. That's a big reproach, man. All over the planet, people call us niggas, man. That doesn't bother you. And then it's it's so uh, or such a uh, a trend amongst our people. Our people love to call each other that, man. That's that's fucked up. So th those curses are in full effect, man. All right. People could just look at you and uh and their frame of reference to you in every country, city, and state is, is that of a criminal. That's why no one wants to be around you. You know. But the Lord is about to reverse all this, man. Everything's about to be changed, man. Yeah, what Shah said, he's going to make all things new. Meaning refreshed. He's going to hit the reset button when he come back. Go ahead, out. This is the book of Amos, chapter 9, verse 11. In that day will I raise up the tabernacle of David that is fallen and close up the breach thereof. Repairer of the breach. Mm -hmm. You know, so by way of the Holy Spirit, moving the men of the Most High, our nation is being rebuilt, man. The house of David. And you're seeing it happen right before your eyes. This is big, man. When you look at videos like this, you know, you look at videos beginning with the apostles. You know, you look at these videos and you look at the brothers chiming in. You know, the apostles going live. Our nation is being rebuilt. You're seeing a kingdom being built from the ground up. All right? So this is huge, man. Because we've been ruined. All right? It's like you look at ancient ruins, a kingdom they used to be, but it's not there no more. You see a coliseum, and you see pillars all broken up. You know? Hey, man, that's what happens to our people, man. You know? Spiritually. Now, we, we physically had a kingdom. Now, they got, you know, tore down too. But what's even worse is what happens to our people, you know, actual people. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, up. He said, and I will raise up his ruins. And I will build it as, the, as in the days of old. So being restored. You know, going back to those former days. How we used to be in the ancient world. Which is why a lot of you brothers, man, like now you're more rugged. Your spirit is more straightforward. You know? You don't cut corners. You're, you're very straightforward in your uh, decision making. All right? You have a adamant, ardent hatred for Esau and other nations. You look at our women being hoes that piss you off. You don't want to be around Jake that's all bugged out because you're you're being restored. It's like it's like the Most High took you from the ancient world, you know, put you in the time machine and brought you to the future and dropped you off. That's how your mind frame is now. You got the same mind how you did in the past because we're being restored, man. It starts with, uh, with your mind. Go ahead, up. All right, now this is the book of Hosea, chapter 6, verse 1. Come and let us return unto the Lord, Yahweh by Shemal Shah, for he hath torn and he will heal us. Yeah, because he's the one that did it. He brought all these curses upon us, man. 
You know, because see, you got our people, man. Mainly our people that's up in the Christian church. You know, their whole ideology is that if evil happens to them or if something bad happens, then that's the devil or that's Satan. You know, which sometimes it can be Satan. But, you know, who sent Satan? It's the Most High that did it. You know, once again, our people give Satan too much credit. Mm -hmm. Satan didn't put these curses upon us. Satan can't kill you. The Most High controls your life, life and death. He controls when you're born. Satan didn't create you. Satan didn't create himself. All right? The Most High brought these curses upon us, man. You know, in every uh, bad event that happened in your life that you can pinpoint, you know, things that, uh, that you remember, the Most High did all that to you, man. He even tells you that in Sirach, you know, he's the God of our whole life. The God of all my life, you know. So from the mo moment you're born at all those different stages and time periods in your life, man, that, that timeline, the, the, the Lord is always there, man. You know, moving pieces in your life, you know, like, like chess. Okay. And preserving you, really, because when you look back at your life and then, you know, you fast forward into the future and you look at where you are now. You know the Lord preserved you. You're like, damn, like, man, I could be dead right now. Or I could be bugged out. I mean, I, I can be around niggas still. I could be still smoking weed. Mm -hmm. I can be eating pork still, man. You know, I can be kissing these women asses. You know, like, you think like, man, like the Lord had me gone. Mm -hmm. But you know, you you know, you like the water you have by Shemel out shot. It ain't like that no more. You know what I'm saying? So this is very big what's happening with us, man. You, you seeing a, a, a kingdom being rebuilt, you know what I'm saying? And, and it's so uh, uh, strategic the way the Most High doing it because th this thing is it's hidden in plain sight. But at the same time, you can't even really just say it's hidden, man. Everybody sees it. It's just a media block on this. All right? But hey, guess what? It's going to be some huge coverage soon. Everybody going to see this thing, man, because it's too, it's too big. You can't hide it. Like Yahweh Shah said, you know, no man light the candle and put it under a, a bushel or under, or under a bed, you know, but he put it on a candlestick, you know, that it may give light to all in the house, you know, so everybody about to see this thing, man. That's why it's so important to do these videos. That's why it's so important to go out on the highways and hedges and teach this word because everybody got to see this thing, man. And then the end is going to come, all right? He says, um, for he have torn and he will heal us. He has smitten and he will bind us up. He smitten us. He has smitten us with slavery. All right. And as bad as you think about it, man, like, hey, man, when you look at like certain videos or different documentaries or uh, certain parts of Roots or just different movies, you know, Goodbye Uncle Tom, Mandingo. All right, you name it, just different uh, movies that go into the time period of slavery. You know, you will look at different things, you know, in, in those films, and you will read certain books on it, and, and, and that should make you want to cry. You may even cry, but the Most High did that. The Lord did that. The Lord was pissed at us, man. And then when you look at our people, when you look at Jake, that's not in the truth, you can't lie to yourself. We deserve that shit, man. We deserve every bit of that. And you see what Jake's still doing. We deserve every bit of this, man. You got certain Israelites that are atheists now. Just full-blown atheists. Just don't, don't even believe in the Most High. They believe in the now. Now, I'm going to do me. Like, it's only one life. Now, you only live once, bro. And fuck, baby, man. I don't want to hear that, man. I'm, I'm about to get money. You know, that's how people think, man. They worship themselves. They all on social media. Taking a million pictures a day. You know, talking about stuff going on in their life. It's not important at all. You know, so we deserve this shit, man. And this that same, see, this this the generation of the Most High's wrath, man. He always spoke about a certain generation that he going to get. They here. And they, they here. Ain't no doubt. That's why it's not going to be another generation after this. You don't got to, you know, think too far in the future, you know, worrying about Shalom, I, Shalom, Shalom. you know, and Shalom, Aki. Shalom, Aki. You know, hey, man, basically, you're not going to have to see your seed grow up here, man. You know, for brothers to have you know, uh, you know, sons and daughters that are toddlers, or, or let's say, uh, you know, infants even, you know, newborns, you're not going to see them grow up here, man, you know, and you got to believe that, but really, hey, when we say believe, hey, we know it, 
I, I know it, it, ain't, it ain't another generation after this shit, man. No. You know? It, it, this shit gotta be stopped, man. Yeah. I was doing laundry earlier, man. You know, at the laundry, man, and the damn tranny was up in there, man. At first I thought it was a damn, you know, nigga woman with a messed up weave. But I took a second look and it was a damn nigga. It was a, a full nigga. A whole, <laughs> you know, nigga. He just, he just lost some damn weight to have feminine arms. You know, taking the... Uh, yeah, I mean, you know what they're doing. They're taking estrogen uh, pills, you know, to change the uh, the hormone, to change the balance in their body so they sound more like a woman. But you ain't no fucking woman, man. But see, if you just think about it. If, if y'all see, you got to grow up here, they got to see that. And and we in a world that's it's, it's, <laughs> it's changing rapidly, you know, every second, man, to where that shit is going to be fully accepted, man. They forcing it on you, you know, Slowly, but really, they they pushing it, man. So your seed gotta see that. And 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 not only that, but see now, the big thing is pedophilia. That's that's the huge whim, you know. That's that's the boom now, pedophilia. That's just being pushed. So you think the Lord about to let this shit keep going, man? Are you crazy? We know it's the last generation, man. All right, no doubt. You know what I'm saying? But uh, we going to get some scriptures too. Come on, yeah. This is from the brother. I've been meaning to get this one. This GMS, uh, Yawasak Kapasha. And he said, Wisdom of Solomon 16 and 12. For it was neither herb nor mollifying plaster. Hey, it, yeah, because you got brothers as good at the herbs. Which, the, you know, the Lord is saying this through the Spirit to show you spiritually what he does, man. Don't give credit to, to the herbs. Hey, man, if you sick, you know, hey, if you literally sick, you got to pray to your house by Shemiah Washah. The important thing is prayer. And the Lord, you know, blesses the herb. He puts his spirit on the herb to heal you. The herb ain't going to heal you by itself. Because you could take herbs all day. You still be fucking sick, man. Bible Shah, read it again. Come on. This is uh, GMS uh, Yawasa Kapasha. It said, Wisdom of Solomon 16 and 12. For it was neither herb nor mollifying plaster that restored them to health, but thy word, O Lord, which healeth all things. The physician and the comforter. Mm -hmm. So it's word, man. This thing is completely spiritual. All right? And that's why, hey, the Lord has lifted up the veil, you know, or, or, or pulled back the veil, so to speak. He revealed this truth to you, man. To see now... Really, you know everything, so it's no excuse. You see the Heavenly Father working through your life, man. You see yourself being preserved. You know, you'll, you'll see a damn car accident. Let's say you, you know, you are uh, 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 on a highway, or well, not even on a highway, man. You just, you know, at, at a uh, intersection, but pretty much, you know what I'm saying, the car that was directly in front of you, they then went out, and it was like a shield to where, so you didn't get hit. And you actually saw their ass get hit. You know, their ass, you know, kept driving. You know what I'm saying? It was a damn red light. Yo, you stopped, but then you see a car turning and hit that car, man. And, and the other car, they hold front bu uh, bumper missing, you know? And you like, shit. You know what I'm saying? You probably had a certain spirit in your mind. Like, you know, you had different things on your spirit. I mean, thinking about different stuff, but then that shake you up. Like, shit. and you giving praise to the Lord, man. And that's another thing, which, you know, the other man gun, he had tuned in. Something that he pushes, when something happens to you, man, you know, if, if something, you know, bad could have happened to you and you got preserved from it, make sure you give praise to your how about Shemiah Washah, man. You know, make sure you do that. And it, actually, we, we got a, a stiff warning to do that. When you read in Tobit, you know, uh, the, the angel of uh, Raphael, oh, well, uh, uh, Rapaya Allah, uh, you know, Hiller uh, of the Most High. Or, 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 or heal of uh, a power, a healer of the power, going into healing. You know, he was sent to uh, to heal uh, Tobit. But basically, uh, Raphael had said, "Don't be slack to uh, praise the Most High, man, because He'll get you, man." You know what I'm saying? Hey, that, that's actually a commandment. You, you commanded to praise Yahweh by Shmuel Shai. You know? You got something else? Come on, oh, oh, two more. He said, this is a GMS Winnipeg Prophets, Jeremiah 15 and 5. For who shall have pity upon thee, O Jerusalem, or who shall bemoan thee, 
or who shall go aside to ask how thou doest? Hey man, that one was perfect. That that yeah. coinc- that lined up directly with what you read earlier. Come. You know? Because don't nobody give a damn about us, man. Come. And you're going to see it. See, that's why we're going to be in our kingdom alone. Don't nobody care about our situation except for us. Come. And you how about Shemiah was shot? The Lord's the only one that, that cares, man. And he's the only one that's watching. Can you uh, uh, get Sirach, uh 17? And that's why we really got to work our work, beat times in this truth. You know, really doing the work, man. Because we're really held accountable. Everything's being watched, man. You know, when it comes to Jake. Especially us that are in the truth, man. The Lord, he said how he would search Jerusalem with candles. Now, he's watching all our people. But a spotlight is really on the men of the Lord. It's really on us, man. You get, uh, yes, yeah, the rock 17. And, uh, yeah, you start at 13. 13. Time. All right, this is the book uh, of Sirach, chapter 17, verse 13. Their eyes saw the majesty of his glory, and their ears heard his glorious voice. Right, right. We saw the huge chariot over uh, Mount Horeb, or Mount Sinai, you know? And, and the Lord gave us the commandments. Go ahead. And he said unto them, Beware of all unrighteousness, and he gave every man commandment concerning his neighbor. Kind. Their ways are ever before him. Always before him. All right, go ahead. And shall not be hid from his eyes. So the heavenly father, you know, through his holy angels, watching everything on, on Jake, man. <laughs> Everything's being watched, man. That's why you got to know you're being watched at all times. And, and that keeps you in the spirit of not slipping, not going off because you know you're being watched. You know, you know that angel right in the room with you. Looking at you. You know? Go ahead, up. And it said, uh, verse 16, Every man from his youth is given to evil, neither could they make to themselves fleshly hearts for stone. Yeah, see, that's why the Lord is having mercy on us, because really he programmed us to go off. You know, he, he said our, the creature was made subject to vanity. Okay, so, which Apostle Paul said that, but the Spirit was speaking through him. You know, so the point is, really, we, we just need the Lord, man. Mm -hmm. Nothing else is going to help. You know, because we're not programmed to do righteousness yet. We don't have that fleshy heart. We have a stony heart still. You know, as much as you want to do righteousness in your spirit, your flesh still want to go off. Mm -hmm. It's just a constant battle. And you get mad, man. You're like, man, fuck, man, these, these damn thoughts. You know, and you may be talking to yourself. You know what I'm saying? Brothers that and you, you really in tune with your spirit, but you just get mad. And another person looking at you, they, they might think, uh, you know, you're crazy or something. I mean, who the hell are you? Because you're battling in your mind. You know what I'm saying? You're you really going through it, man. You know, because this battle is in our head. You know what I'm saying? You know, like the scripture say, uh, 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 life and death is in the power of the tongue. But really, it starts in your mind. Because see, what, before you say something, you're thinking it. That's why you have what Shai said, you know, uh, that which goeth uh, inside a man doesn't defile him, but what comes out of a man? Would you people in the church, you use that to justify eating pork and other abominations? They're not talking about you free to eat whatever you want to eat. You're still supposed to keep the uh, Levitical diet, all right? It's talking about the uh, the wicked thoughts in your mind because you, you uh, make it action. You think it first, but then you manifest it in, 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 uh, you know, in your flesh, all right? Well, uh, like it says in Sirach, it tells you uh, the trial of man is in his reasoning, you know? So your, your, your battle or your war, your trial is through your uh, decision making. Whether you're going to do the right thing or the wrong thing, man, you know? And it's a constant battle. And see, that's why, once again, we're getting into this through the spirit because this truth is the only thing that's going to help you, man. All right? And something else that we need to practice more is more of... Uh, independent reading you know because see it's easy to watch videos a lot of times it's easy to even do lessons because see once you do it so much it's just habitual like it's it's nothing it's like you programmed to, to do it. it's like a reflex mm -hmm. but see like the main thing we need to do is build up our faith you know in our spirit man by way of reading you know because see if, if you just got it in your spirit like man it's cool. I don't, I don't gotta do that, man. You start losing it after a while. You you'll become dull. Mm -hmm. That that sword ain't so sharp no more. You know. 
Go ahead, Ock. All right, um, this is St. Matthew. You know, we're going to go into the New Testament, you know, and explain how you how shot. All right, is that comforter and that healer, man. Mm -hmm. You know, this is the book of uh, St. Matthew, chapter 9, verse 10. And it came to pass as Yahweh Shah sat at me in the house. Behold, many publicans and sinners came and sat down with him and his disciples. And when the Pharisees saw it, they said unto his disciples, Why eat of your master with publicans and sinners? But when Yahweh Shah heard. Yeah, basically, uh, regular Israelites. Mm -hmm. Just regular Israelites, Israelites that they don't that uh don't have a prominent position mm -hmm. in the society, you know they don't give off that uh that self righteous or over righteous vibration, that holier than thou vibration, mm -hmm. you know. So really, that's considered to be us, regular men. Go ahead. But when you have a shot, heard that he said, so lucky. But when you have a shot, heard that he said unto them. They that behold need not a physician, but they that are sick. They that behold, meaning you righteous. See, the Lord ain't looking for you guys that just think that you righteous like that, man. Mm -hmm. Now, we are supposed to rehearse the righteous acts. We're, so, we're supposed to keep the laws to the best of our ability. But for you cats out there that say, well, it's all about the laws. As if the laws are going to save you. You proclaiming your own righteousness, man. Mm -hmm. And, and the, the scriptures warn you about that. You being ignorant of the most high's righteousness. You know, you got that zeal, but not according to knowledge. You got that zeal, but not according to true uh, knowledge, man. Thinking that you're going to deliver yourself, man. It don't matter, you know, how many fringes you got on and a border of blue and you wearing it to the movies or out to eat somewhere, man, or on a job, wearing your fringes and your border of blue on a job, man, as if you're some damn body. Mm -hmm. First of all, the fringes in the border of blue, that's a reminder to keep the law, statutes, and commandments. Now, it is a law, too, but it's more so of a reminder, okay? This time, in this time period right now, the Lord is looking at the spiritual man. Who are you? Yeah, I, I can see your outward appearance, but what's in your mind? That's what the Lord really care about. What's inside here? You know, because that, that's who you really are. You know? You can have your friends in border blue on all you want to everywhere you go, but you can be eating damn catfish and committing adultery, man, with a bald damn head. Or dreadlocks, you know? The Lord ain't looking for niggas like that, man. Go ahead, I. I mean, I can say this. You got also that um plantation Christianity will say they're already saved. So you say yeah, they're yeah. saying they yeah. already hold. They hold already. You know, you don't need a savior. If you already saved, you know, you don't need a savior. You don't need a physician. You know? I was out. I, I got saved May 16th, 1985. You know, I asked the Lord to come into my life, you know. You saying you already hold, man, you know? But uh, I got that definition kind of uh, the word um, physician in the uh, Greek. Charles G. 2390. Iyama. 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 I'm going to get straight to the point. It says to cure, to heal, to make whole, to free from errors and sins, yeah. to bring about one's salvation. None of those things are fully happy. Uh -huh. You know, now we're being cured. We're being cured, but, but we're not fully cured. Uh -huh. You know, once again, you've been freed from that mental slavery, but you still have things that you go through, mm -hmm. and you're still going off. We, we, we have sins that we commit that we don't even know, man. Like, like man, that was a law? Like, damn. Because a brother had asked me, you know, dealing with, uh, you know, the, the Torah, you know, the, uh, the Torah that I use, you know, uh, mostly when I do certain videos, right? You know, the the, uh, the red one that was uh, it was compiled by uh, by Neil L. Harvey. You know, uh, on the book, his Hebrew name is Karada Zayala. But if you look for that book, because it's called the Holy Bible slash Hebrew Torah, and if you look for it, like on Amazon or anywhere, they're not uh, they're not making them anymore. You know, what I'm saying that there's no more uh, copies. You know, what I'm saying. You know, and hey, Esau, he's responsible for that, man. You know, probably saw that one video I did like years ago, man. Uh, basically going into the names and I used that book, you know. So from that moment on, he's like, man, shit, fuck that. We got to take this out of circulation. Uh, we can't we can't keep publishing those, you know. But when you look in that book, and I'm sure there's other tours like that, they go into the laws as well. But it goes into the 613 laws. All right. 
because the brother was asking me about it. You know, if I could do a video on it, which I'm going to just, Lord, we'll just, you know, send them some of the, uh, the pictures of those laws, you know, send them copies of it. But basically, that's a long list of laws, man. It's no way possible we can keep all those laws in the flesh, man. You know? It's no way possible. In this captivity. In this captivity. You know? But then, outside this captivity, let's say, if the Lord didn't change our bodies, the Lord brought us back to the land of Israel, and, and if it, you know, if it was his will for us to go off again, like, you know, fully, you know, hey, we, we'd be right back in the situation, man. We wish the Lord isn't going to do that, but I'm just making the point, if we're not changed, we're still going to keep going off, man. There's no way possible you can keep all those laws, man. No way possible. Like I said, you would look at that, you'd be like, like, damn, that was a law. You know? But, yeah, so the point is, that's why we need the physician. You know? And then it said to be free from sin, but also to be delivered from captivity. You know? Salvation. salvation. And that's, that's real salvation. Showing you that we ain't saved yet, man. You got something else? Yeah. Now, I got uh, Philippians 1 and 6. And I got a few different uh, translations. I'm going to read the King James first. You know, and this is going to prove your point on how you're saying that uh, we have begun, you know, the healing process, Time. but it's not complete. This is the book of uh, Philippi uh, yeah, Philippians chapter 1, verse 6. It said, being confident in this very thing, that he which has begun a good work in you, will perform it until the day of Yahweh Shai Hamashiach. So it's going to be finished when Yahweh Shai actually comes. Come. That's it. That's the key point, man. Everything that we're doing is it's all going to be fulfilled in that right there, man. Mm -hmm. All right? That's when it's fully accomplished. That's when you you, uh, you apprehend it fully. That, that, that's when everything's going to stop. That's when you're good. Come. You know, you finish the race. You know, but see, until that point, until that set time, we here, man. Uh -huh. You know what I'm saying? Because right now, this is the uh, beginning stages of the new covenant. Uh -huh. But then we still got that stony heart. Uh -huh. All right. So it, it ain't finished yet, man. It ain't going to be finished till the Lord actually comes, man. Uh -huh. That's why you got to do this work, you know, until the Lord comes. Even if it means that you die in the process, which we know that we ain't about to be here long. But let's say if if the Lord, he didn't show up as long as you was living, you still got to keep doing the work. Which we know the Lord is coming back in his lifetime. So we don't put off the evil day, man. You got, I got to bring these guys up again. You got Sakari them. They basically making children's books. And they're saying that, well, we can leave these children's books. Because, you know, because they got the, uh, the Bible characters. They got, got them depicted as Israelites. How Israelites, you know, look during that time. You know the the, uh, the dark skin, the uh, the woolly beards, wo woolly hair on the head, you know, etc. You know, probably got certain Hebrew names up in there or whatnot. But uh, our children ain't about to be here, man. Where's your mind at? You know, because uh, Hakai Gawion said that yeah, we leaving this so just in case the Lord doesn't come back in this lifetime, we leave this for our children and they'll have something to go by. Are you out your damn mind? Are you out your damn mind? And then first of all, if you got to see, and the scriptures say, train up a child the way he should go. You know? You just, you, you know, you, you just teach him what to do. But leaving children's books and just thinking that we about to be here, man, you tripping. Evidently, you ain't watching. You ain't see that uh, uh, strike the U.S. did on Syria. Evidently, you ain't keeping up with these different summits and uh, meetings, you know, between uh, uh, America's uh, uh, enemies. All right? You know, Russia, uh, Iran, and Syria. And Turkey. And Turkey. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and, and Turkey is a part of the EU. Mm -hmm. You know, so... NATO. Yeah, NATO, it's like it. It's a part of NATO. So where's your mind at, man? All right? Yeah, you go ahead. I got a few uh, different translations just to prove the point, Elvin, on uh, Philippians 1 and 6. Now, this is the... Uh, the New King James Version. It says, being confident this very thing that he who has begun a good work in you will complete it until the day of your house shot Masiyah. Yeah, so we're not fully healed yet. This is the beginning. It's on the beginning, man. You know, spiritually, you've been healed, but physically, we're still here. You're still suffering. 
you still get sick, you still got to go to work, you still got to pay child support, for, you know, for some brothers. Some brothers don't got no job. That's suffering. You broke. All right? The list goes on and on, man. I mean, fill in the blanks. You know, you catching a train, you know, certain places, you got to, uh, hey, man, sometimes it becomes hell driving every damn where, man. You got to get up way early in the morning, some brothers, 5 a.m., 6 a.m., you know, or working overnight for some brothers. Brothers driving trucks. We still in captivity, man. You know? But see, what separates us from these other cats out here that call themselves Israelites, we don't want to stay here. We ready to leave, man. You can't love your life in this world and then thinking you about to make it because when all hell breaks loose, man, for Jake that hasn't unplugged already, it's going to be hard for them to let go, man. That's why I stood to say remember Lot's wife. A lot of Jakes, they're going to look at their women or just their position that they had in the society and they're going to look back, man. They're going to get weak, you know, because of carnal thoughts, man. Because really, see, they didn't count the costs. And then uh, going back to the recent video Elder Pascal Bar did, the big question, if you've counted the cost and if you really believe in this thing, you have nothing to worry about. You're going to be grounded when all hell break loose. You're going to be grounded when the next big attack happens. And Esau blames it on the Israelites because he's going to do it. So you're going to be all right. You're gonna be, you ain't going to be bugging out because a lot of Jake, man, they're going to they gonna, uh, throw off the mask. So to speak, man, you know, put off that uh, facade, which uh, the word facade, it goes to uh, to face. But, but basically that uh, that image or that 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 uh, that covering that that false image that they had pro proclaiming to be Israelites. But they didn't really believe, man, because if your heart ain't really here, you know, it's going to show, man. It's, it, hey, when it's life and death, when you see that, oh, shit, I can not die for this thing. What, what the hell you thought? A lot of Jacob, like, really? Oh, you forgot about that. Oh, you forgot that Esau can threaten to kill your family. Or or uh, just kill them right in front of you. You didn't know what you signed up for? It's about to happen, man. You know? So, hey, we that's why we got to stay grounded, man. Because we know what you know what's coming. And it's still coming. <laughs> All right? It don't matter what you got going on, man. You know, it, it don't matter if you got a side chick, which really ain't no such thing as a side chick, but basically, let's say you got a second wife or something like that. You, you got you a new woman, and then let, let's say your, your other woman, your, your, your main woman, your first woman know about it, so to speak. Jacob's trouble still coming, man. Well, let's say you got a, a few women, and I'm going to, into the woman thing because we men, we know that we can have multiple women, but women can become a, a distraction if you let them, Okay? And it doesn't matter what you have here anyway, because see, the thing is, you'll never fully be satisfied anyway. The point is, you really got to let go, man, in the spirit. Now, we ain't telling you to leave your woman or women or and we ain't telling you to quit your job or anything like that. But you need to spiritually let go of this place, man. That, that way, when the time comes, you can physically do it, you know. And if it means even leaving your woman behind, if you got to, let's say if she want to take the chip. Or, uh, or she want to take, you know, take the children and have them chipped or whatever the case may be. They want to go to a FEMA camp or she want to go to a FEMA camp because she thinks that they'll be protected, you know, and taken care of by the government. You got to let her go. You know, hey, man, some of these women that brothers have, man, those really are just women for the moment. Until you get your real women. You know, every case ain't the same, but just speaking, speaking generally it's, it's generalized. All right. You, you got to know what you involved in, man. All right? Now, I know I'm ranting, but it's all making sense through the spirit. Go ahead. All right. Now, this is uh, the St. Uh, Saint John chapter 14. And I started at 16, you know, going to the comforting, man. You know, because yeah. like the elder was saying, all right, we're going to be grounded because we know how this is going to turn out. When all hell break loose, we know what's on the other side of it. Mm -hmm. See, these people don't understand what's on the other side of this rap, all right, that uh, so-called white man can come down with, man. You know, and not only the rap of the so-called white man, but the rap of the most high, man. Yeah. When these, when these people see newly created creatures, you know, when they see uh, the, the the animals, the Lord put the spirit on these animals to be in these residential areas in these cities, 
Yeah, All hey right. man, you're gonna be seeing people getting mauled by Jaguars and shit. Mm -hmm. You know? You know, gorillas smashing babies, just this crazy bugged out shit, man. A lion on the loose, you know, the ate a woman face off, or, or ate a head off, you know. You know, but see, on a bigger level, now, hey, Esau will do his thing, but see, keep in mind, even that's a part of the wrath of the most high. Now we we know ultimately the Lord gonna destroy this place with nuclear missiles, your house shot gonna come back with the chariots. You know, sh you know, shooting laser beams, you know, on cities, you know, blasting people to powder, etc. But all this is a part of the wrath of the Most High. You know, we can't give Esau too much credit, man. You know, he's a chess piece, you know. Go ahead. And it said this, uh, St. John uh, 14 and 16, and I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter. Another comforter. Because Yahweh Shai, he was our comforter during that time. And he came in the flesh, you know, so he was comforting us during that time. But see, now we have another comforter, which is in the, in the form of this book, having the understanding. All right. The Holy Spirit, another comforter. And the word comforter goes into helper. This I help. You know, this was going to help you, man. All right. Because keep in mind, like the average person, you know, and see, don't bug out. So don't bug out when they bug out. Let them be bugged out by themselves, man. When they see people getting, you know, get their heads blown off during martial law, you know? Hey, because Esau, he's going to just be completely unmerciful, man. Inhumane. Mm -hmm. You know? He's going to show his true nature. You're going to see what an Edomite really is. Mm -hmm. You know? Because, yeah, we call him the devil. But when you see Esau fully embrace his spirit of who he is, he's going to do it. You know? You think about all those different time periods when the Lord sent Esau on us, man. The time of the Greeks, the Maccabean period, you know, the, the Roman period, siege of Jerusalem, you know, Titus and Vespasian, uh, 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 Cristobal Colon, him and his men, the, the, uh, the Spanish conquistadors, what they did to the northern tribes, what the English did to Jake here in North America and did to Gad, um, you know. I made the point, you know, we know, uh, 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 we speak on Crucifixion of Yahweh Shai, because that was the most important thing mm -hmm. in uh, uh, in Israelite history, you know. But you got to uh, remember the Romans were persecution with uh, crucifying Israelites, you know, really at will, man. They were crucifying Israelites just as a sacrifice to one of their gods, man. Yeah. All right, a torturous death, man, just a sacrifice to one of their gods. So, like the elder is saying, when they embrace that spirit. You know who they are? Because all those spirits are back, man. Yeah. Most I just ain't tapped into it and turned them up yet, man. Yeah, yeah. why do you think these Edomites, you know, are clansmen? Mm hmm You know, the, you know, the, you got the uh, Ku, Ku Klux Klan. Yeah. They embracing that spirit, man. They don't even know. A lot of them damn devils, those of them that's not in the history, don't even know what them burn those crosses go back to, man. And that shows they don't stand for the Messiah. They hate your Messiah, Jake. For those of you that want to save crackers, man, you want to save Edomites, they hate the Messiah, man. They, they burn crosses, you know? Esau, they, they be wearing upside-down crosses. Esau be having a damn peace sign on them, which is a, a broken upside-down cross. So they hate everything that we stand for, man. Mm -hmm. And then if they was, you know, uh, uh, burning and, uh, and uh, crucifying Israelites at will, you know, the Israelites, that's the body of the Lord, man. So th th that shows you who this devil truly is. And he's going to embrace it, man. Hey, don't be surprised during Jacob's trouble when you're just walking down the street and you see a lot of Jakes burning on crosses, man. You're going mean, to see this shit out in the open. All right? It's just crazy shit, man. Or, or a group of Jakes chained up on the ground. He's talking about them cha chained up. And they all lit on fire, man. You know? Some crazy, bugged out, walking dead type shit, man. He saw... You know, pouring gasoline on Jake, walking around, got him in a circle, and they all chained up, got their hands behind their back. That's how this devil think. That's how this devil fucking think, man. Raping your children in front of you. That's the, that's the sadistic demon we dealing with, man. All right? But the point is, like, El Apostle Gabor always push, and all the apostles, but something that he always pushes, don't be afraid of this shit, man. Don't be afraid of shit. Why? You got the comfort. All right? Go ahead out. And it says, um, and he shall give you another comforter 
that he may abide with you forever. Even Wait a minute. So right now in this time, those of us that stay in this thing, Abarazza, you gonna have this knowledge forever, man. We're gonna we're gonna possess this knowledge forever. Even tells you that uh, in the book of Revelation, how we don't have no need of the sun or the moon, which the sun and the moon still gonna be around. So you know you don't get simple. Basically, the the, uh, the sun represents knowledge, and the, and the moon represents understanding. We're gonna possess this knowledge forever, man. Not to mention the chariots gonna be all over us uh, in the kingdom, man. They're going to be hovering over Jerusalem. Everywhere the, uh, where the Israelites dwell at, it's going to be chariots as an entourage over you, man. You know, so we're protected. We have nothing to worry about, man. Hey, uh, like Alicia said to his understudy, they that be with us are more than they that be with them. Which he was talking about the Syrians, but in this time, dealing with the Edomites. It's way more of us than them, man. If the most High open your spirit up and you saw the armies of heaven, Hey, you will feel like a child. You should be praising the Lord. You, you'll be mind blown, man. If you saw them chariots maneuvering in the sky, you know, buzzing around like bees shooting across the sky, you know. That's the power we have, man. We, we got a real air force. So we don't got shit to be afraid of, man. Even, even if you got to put your life on the line, you know. That, hey, know what you involved in. Go ahead, Doc. I got the word comforter in the Greek. 3875. Parakletas. Parakletas. All right, and I'm going to get straight to the point in the strong definition. It said, one who pleads another cause before a judge, a pleader, a counsel for defense. That's this truth. This we, we counsel by way of the scriptures. And, and it tells you, I believe it's uh, in the book of Proverbs, it tells you with, with, with wise counsel we shall make our war. That's what we're doing, man. And dealing with counting the cost. It tells you, you know, when you count the cost, you, you got to know what you're doing, if, you know, when you're going to go to war. You know, you got to be real calculated, man. You got to think, hey, you got to be prudent. You know what I'm saying? You got to know the uh, the measures to, uh, to take. You, you got to have pre preventive measures. And you got to think way ahead of the enemy, man. You know, you got to be like five steps ahead of, of uh, the enemy. You know what I'm saying? So that's what we're dealing with. And once again, think about who you're dealing with. Esau, hey man, <laughs> he's, he's our polar opposite, man. You know? The, the complete opposite of us. If we was made to be righteous, Esau was made to be completely wicked, man. Completely wicked. You know? Once again, you know, I've been talking about this a lot lately. That's why these Edomites are into these different horror movies, man. You know, and about sacrificing people, they, they all into worshiping Satan, you know, and they like to pay homage to these demons and to witches and warlocks when that's all low level energy. You know, it's power, but Satan has a limit, man. Yeah, how about Shemia was shy is unlimited, he has infinite power, man. So, what are we worried about? We have nothing to be worried about, man. You know, and I'm saying that for Jake's that you know, that they, they scared to teach the truth, you scared to get out there. Scared to do videos, scared to put your face on camera. They already know who you are any damn way. And then when Jacob's trouble comes, they're going to come for you anyway. You know? So, hey, have that, that uh, fuck it juice, man. Like, fuck it, I, I, can, I can die anyway. Hey, why not, man? They already know who I am. You know? But the point is, hey, dealing with the comforter, man. Beginning with Yahweh Shai, he's pleading to the Father for us. You know, he's making intercession for us right now. All right, he's helping us in the heavens, man. You know, talking to his, his uh, heavenly Father because he's dealing with us. The Most High not dealing with us directly. You have a shy is, man. But also by way of the Holy Spirit, we know what to do in these times, man. Okay, because see, at this point in time, this knowledge is in you, man. It's in you. Now, now we know that uh, we don't have the uh, the full fulfillment of the new covenant yet. If that was the case, we'd be uh, perfect. But that's why it's important for us to read. So you can keep these scriptures in you. All right? So you can remember. All right? Go ahead, up. This is my last one. Bro. Go on. This is the book of Malachi, chapter 4, verse 1. For behold, the day coming that shall burn as an oven, and all the pride, yeah, 
all they do wickedly shall be stubble, and then they come, and the day come, they coming shall burn them up, said the Lord of hosts, that it shall uh, leave them neither root nor branch. So you got to keep in mind that everything that you see in the now, because Jake believe in the now, a lot of Jake, everything you see right now is going to disappear. Everything is going to be gone, man. We ain't going to be, ain't nothing going to be here. Everything going to fucking disappear, man. And I always like to, you know, bring up the point because you rem remind me of the word, of the word simulation. Because really, this life that we experience right now is a test, man. Just think about it like you in a simulation and it feel real, which this is real, you know, don't get it twisted. This is real, but just think about it at the most I could just make all this vanish right before your eyes. It just, just slowly disappears. Everything disappears and you in like a big white room. And the most high looking at you, you know, telling and he telling you that like, you performed well. You did good. All right? So, hey, this is real, man. This is real, but the point is, this shit ain't going to be here, bro. Everything going to be gone, man. And we ain't going to be here. So why even invest in a uh, in a life that uh that ain't going to exist, man? You know? But the word of the most high going to bow forever. Dealing with the prophecies. And the prophecy states that we have a kingdom coming, man. All right? Which is why you got to hate your life in this world, man. All right? Go ahead up. Verse 2, and this the point. But unto you that fear my name shall the son of righteousness. Oh, you have a shot. Mm -hmm. Ar arise with healing in his wings. With healing. And, and he was telling Jake, man, you know, oh, Jerusalem, oh, Jerusalem, thou that killest the prophets. Matter of fact, can you get that really quick? I don't want to misquote it. In Matthew uh, 23. And if we can get it also, and uh, I want to go to second address because it's in there also. But yeah, uh, Matthew 23. 37. Yep. This is uh, Matthew 23 and 37. O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that killest the prophets and stonest them which are sent unto thee. Which is us. So you Jakes got to keep in mind. Those of y'all that's doing this work, we were murdered in our past lives by our own people, man. But see, they ain't going to be able to do it again this time. All right? So we were murdered in the past. But see, now this is the time when the prophet's going to inherit the kingdom, man. The promise. Go ahead. It says, I have gathered thy children to... So like it said, uh, I start back at the top. This is Matthew 23 and 37. Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that killest... The prophets and stoners them which are sent unto thee. How often would I have gathered thy children together, even as hens gathered her chickens under her wings, and ye would not? Con, basically, uh, by way of the angels, by way of the holy angels, man, those are the wings, you know, as as the chicken gathered her her her, uh, her hens under her wings. Pretty much, we'd be out of this situation, man. But it, it tells you those that fear the Lord's name, going, going back to uh, in Malachi, the son of righteousness, Yahweh shall arise with healing in his wings. We've been healed by way of the Holy Spirit. We're dealing with the holy angels because the angels tap into our, our minds, our pineal gland, and we have his knowledge now, man. We've been healed through the Spirit. But the, the point is, man, we have to finish our course, and when Yahweh shot comes, then we're going to be fully healed, fully cured of these plagues, these goddamn curses, man, that follow us wherever we go, like a damn uh, uh, rain cloud, you know, like a gray cloud hanging over our head, man. You know, because Jake plagued, man. You know, you brothers feel it. You know what you go through, man, your day-to-day, -day, and it be so bugged out sometimes, like, you like, goddamn, you can't make this shit up. So you know it's spiritual. And see, and, and the thing is, this is the only way you can put the pieces of the puzzle together, man. Now it makes sense. By way of the, the uh, physician, the comforter. Like, damn, that's why this shit was happening, man. Damn, that's why Jake doing, man, damn. Yeah, that show the, that who that's Esau right there. You're putting everything together. All right? You got something else? You want the second angels? Yeah, yeah, come on, come on. Get, uh, and then we get uh, St. John chapter 12, and then you can close out with Sirach 10. <clears throat> but yeah, 2nd Edges chapter uh, 1. Chapter 1 and 
Salaki. 1 and verse uh, 30. Beginning verse 29. All right, this is the book of 2 Ezra, chapter 1, verse 29. That ye will be my people, and I shall be your power. That ye will be my children, and I shall be uh, your father. I gather you together as hen gather her chickens under her wings. But now, what shall I do unto you? I will cast you out from my face. Yeah, and he did that. He cast us out the land. <laughs> you know? Because it tells you how the land of Israel... You know, the, the Most High always has his eyes on that land. So us being casted out of his sight or out of his face is us being cast out the land. But you read how the other nations called us an outcast, this Zion who no man seeketh after. So you got to put these prophecies together, man. You know that this is truth. And the proof is the truth because the churches don't talk about it, man. They don't touch on this. What happened to the Israelites, man? Going throughout the, the uh, time periods in history, uh, the time periods in history, what transpired that led up to Israel being scattered and where they at now and who they are today. Okay? Because that's what the most high dealing with, man. That's the truth. Okay? And through the spirit, it's only one group of men that's going to be able to put it all together through the spirit, and those men are the elect. All right? And you're seeing it happen, man. We don't realize how phenomenal or how much of a miracle this is, man. This is a miracle being performed, man. And see, and the thing is, you brothers about to get gathered together. You know? You being gathered by the word, but hey, hey man, it's brothers and it's truth. At the end of the day, they about to get beamed up, man. And you know it's the truth, man. You know? And if we hold on for dear life, it's going to be us. You stay in this thing, you're going to be one of them men that's, that's uh, talked about in, in the scriptures, you know? That's written in the book of life. That's you. Okay? But uh, we can get uh, see, yeah, 12 and 25. Come on. But see, the, the uh, key is, you understand these scriptures, you knowing who the physician is, how he healed you, which is how was shy, you having the comforter, the understanding of these scriptures, you know, the Holy Spirit, you having, you know, th this in your mind, you having all these things in, in uh, consideration, you got to unplug, man. Let the world go, man. This bitch is about to die, okay? And, and by the world, I mean Esau's system. The, the beast, all right? This beast system. It's about to fucking die, all right? Hey, and we shelling the beast, <laughs> all right? As brothers say, man, we tearing this bitch apart by the word, man. This, this, hey, man, this truth is huge. And Esau is going to have to confront us, man. It's, it's too much of a problem at this point. Esau seeing camps pop up around the planet that we don't even know about, man. See, he's seeing more than we do by, by way of his uh, satellites, you know, and cameras, okay? Him being as the most high, seeing everything, all right? So he know he has but a short time. Go ahead, Op. This is the book of St. John, chapter 12, verse 25. <clears throat> he that loveth his life shall lose it. And he that hated his life in this world shall keep it until life eternal. So if you love your life, if you worship the image of the beast, okay, you're going to lose your life, man. You're going to die with the beast. You're going to die with the system. You ain't going to make it, man. Don't look back. Don't look back, man. And don't put the plow down. Hey, keep teaching. Keep teaching. So what, Esau coming? Fuck Esau, man. Let him come. You know? Let him do what he's going to do, man. You know, and, and, and pray, you know, through the spirit that you have a, a calm and collective spirit during that time, man. Because Esau hates it when you keep your composure. He hates that shit, man. When, 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 you, just, when you just accept what your how about Shemel is doing, you're going to let the Lord do it. Let the Lord take care of it. Esau hates that. He wants us all mad, cursing him out. Mm -hmm. Which we get on Esau, you know. We're we, we going to stay on Esau. But we, we uh, break him down by way of these prophecies, though. You know, the most high person he saw out. But see, you keeping your composure like our Lord Yahweh Shai did, he hates that. When you, just, when you uh, ignore Esau, I mean, it's dope. Hey, you ain't nothing. Hey, the, the reason why I'm in this damn camp, the most high got me here. You know, you, you can have no power. Hey, Yahweh Shai Yahweh Shai controlling you. You know, that's the point, you know, of the level of faith we got to have, man. Because it's, it's easier said than done. Because when you actually put in that scenario or situation, 
You know, it, it could uh, it could shake you up a bit because you see how real it is. Which is why the Lord is building brothers up now to be able to go through that. But the point is, if you love your life in this world, hey, you're going to lose it. But if you hate your life, which is the key, you're supposed to hate your life in this world, you're going to have that everlasting life, man. All right? Meaning you're about to go right into the kingdom. When you have a shot to come back, you're going right into the kingdom, man. That's why he said there's going to be some man standing here that's not going to taste the death. And he was talking to, to the uh, disciples 2,000 years ago when he said that, man. But those same spirits, his disciples, which the Lord had more than 12, all right? But they came back in this time. All those men are back, man, all those spirits. And they're not going to taste death in this time, man. Now, some brothers going to be martyrs. If certain brothers going to be martyrs, they're they going to have to taste death. But really, they don't die. They just, they just go right to the spirit world, and they're going to come back, man. All right? So the, the key is, man, us having this truth, once again, you should know the truth, and the truth shall make you free, man. All right? But uh, last that. scripture. Yes, yeah, Sirach <clears throat> 10 and... Uh, we can read uh, 9 down to 10. So, <clears throat> this is the book of Sirach, chapter um, 10, verse 9. Why is earth and ashes proud? There is not a more wicked thing than a, covet a covetous man. Yeah, so the man covetous man is Esau. So it's talking about him. And he's earth and ashes, and he's proud. Hey, uh, Habakkuk tells you that he's a proud man. It's talking about Esau. All right, but see, the thing is, two thirds of our people, they they uh of their father, uh, the devil, so called white man, they're doing the same thing Esau does, because hey, the uh the culture of America is uh based off of covetousness, man, having what everybody else got or, or desiring what they have, you know, that's the foundation of the American dream, desiring what someone else has, you know, basically envying the oppressor to, to be like Esau. You know, but it's not a more wicked thing than a covetous man, which is mainly Esau. Go ahead. For such as one set his own soul to sell. Yeah. So, and it's different ways of selling out. It's different forms of selling out. You know, you just wanted to make it in this world, and you, let's say you notice the truth, but you would rather have a prominent position in Esau society. That's selling out, man. Okay. You know, but going back to uh, the, the uh, devil himself, Esau, he's the original sellout. He sold his birthright because he was covetousness, or excuse me, it's like I said it wrong. He was covetous of uh, of that, you know, morsel of meat that, that uh, Jacob had, that that, that, uh, that red pottage, you know, with, uh, with uh, lentils and that raw meat, you know. Esau was covetous of that. And all Esau had to do was wait. But, hey, we're glad that you didn't wait because now we had a birthright and a blessing, which is why Esau coming for us, man. They didn't forget about that. That's why Esau, you know, he, he said to himself, when, uh, when Isaac dies, I'm going to slay my brother because he got my birthright. He's, hey, uh, the Rothschilds got that same spirit now, man. That's why they're going to bring this new world order because they, they got all the history. They have certain records. They got certain brothers' genealogies, you know. <laughs> they, they got all that, man. <laughs> now, we don't need that stuff, but they got it, you know? So they know exactly who we are. And they didn't forget that they sold their birthright. They, they know that they Esau, okay? But, hey, it's cool because, see, the thing is, your world is about to die, Esau. And your world is a cancer. You, hey, a main part of why Jake is sick, man, your, your world is a fucking cancer, man. Even Joe Rogan said that. He was talking about L.A., L.A. is like a, uh, a, a uh, what do you say? It's like a, uh, like some type of disease, or it's like a cancer on a sandwich, basically. Like a plant. I mean, he, he explained it in a bugged out way, you know? But uh, he was like, if you look at L.A., you look at all these different factories, the smoke going up, these different cars driving through, you know, all the pollution in the air, it's like a big cancer on planet Earth. But really, that's Esau's system as a whole. And you look at all these different nations that adopted the, the uh, Western philosophy or, or Westernization, they adopted that way of life. Their, their uh, whole society is all messed up. So you the cancer of the earth, devil. And we're going to see what the physician going to do. Go ahead, up. 
It says because while he lived, he cast away his vows. Yeah, man. While Esau was living, going back in the beginning, when you sold your birthright, you cast away your integrity. Now, what good is this birthright to me? What, what good? He said that in himself, man. And hey, if Esau could make it, why would the Apostle Paul reiterate what happened in Genesis in the book of Hebrews? Lest there be any fornicator or profane person as Esau. Like, man, it's the lowest devil that, that could ever exist. Why would he bring that up? And you got to keep in mind during that time, the New Testament wasn't written yet. It just started to be written, you know? Why would he reiterate that? Because Esau don't got a chance in hell, man. Esau can't be saved. They weren't created for salvation. All right? In the beginning, you cast away your vows, meaning your integrity. You sold your soul, man. And you, and, and you get a kick out of seeing Jack do it today. That's why you get all these different celebrities of Israel that's selling out to Esau, doing certain rituals, blood sacrifices. Selling out their own mama, man. Just some low down dirty shit, man. You know, going through uh, you know, uh, MK Ultra, you know, being re-educated, having your mind or your psyche broken, and Esau building you back up. So you got um multiple uh, personalities, different alter egos, which basically are different demons on you. You know, hey, this moment do this type of person, next moment, you don't know who that guy is, man. Hey, that, that was the, the purpose. You had that one movie that came out. It's called Split. The, the, the one guy, he had all those different uh, personalities, which are really demons, man. And Esau knows all that. But hey, you jakes, you fell right into the trap, man. Okay? Esau wants you to sell your soul just like he did in the beginning, man. Because, see, he knows that he don't got that birthright or the blessing, and he's never going to get it. So he knows this is the end of his kingdom, so he wants to get as many Israelites to sell out as he can, man, because it's it for him. He don't want you to, to uh, inherit the kingdom, all right? He don't want, you know, uh, you to inherit the kingdom when you have a shot come back, all right? Go ahead, up. Verse 10, the physician cut it off a long disease, and he that is today a king, tomorrow shall die. Yeah. Now, we explain who the physician is. Our Lord, you have a shot. Okay, he cut it off a long disease, you know. So that goes to a couple things. He gonna cut off these curses from Israel, but guess what? He's gonna cut off Esau's society. Mm -hmm. It it tells you in Second Ezra that shall die that is corrupt. Mm -hmm. His society's corrupt, man, and it's a cancer. It's a fucking cancer, man. You know, which is why the planet Earth is in the process of uh, you know, fighting to heal itself. That's why you had these different earthquakes and volcanoes, you know, the the, the, the weather and, and, uh, and, and the seasons all out of whack, you know, because the, the planet Earth is, is uh, fighting to uh, fix itself. But see, it's really going to be fixed when the Lord comes, man, because he is the physician. But it said a physician cut up off a long disease, the physician cut up off a long disease, and he that is today a king, tomorrow should die. That king today is Esau, man. And he's about to die. You know, his system, he about to go into slavery, man. All right? And after that, after the thousand-year period, hey, you know what time it is. You know? You got anything else? Come on, just um, laying back on what you're saying. That's why Esau is known as, as a physician of no value, man. Yep. You know, because the way he's running the planet Earth, man, it isn't profitable to the Earth, man. Yeah. Hey, uh, and it, it says he's a forger of lies also. Come on, come it's like on. if you forge somebody's signature... You know, you, you're writing your signature in a place where another signature is supposed to be. So. Someone else's. So Esau, he's, he's seeking to forge that uh that birthright, man. And a blessing, but that's not for you. You want to put yourself in a place or in a position of, of uh, the Israelites. And what we about to get. But that's not for you, man. You don't belong in power. Everything about your system is corrupt. You know, whether it's the... Uh, the uh, uh, you know, pharmaceutical industry, these different hospitals, your, your, your food and drug administration, you know, on a political level, you know, you're passing different legislation. Everything is corrupt, man. All right. Which is why it's the end of you. All right. So we hope brothers were edified. You know, basically the point is, man, we have nothing to worry about. At the end of the day, you got the physician with you. You have the Holy Spirit, which is the comforter. 
and you're being comforted, man. Like it tells you in uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, uh, the last verse, wherefore comfort one another with these words. So, you know, with that, we hope you were comforted in, uh, in this lesson, in this sit down. So, yeah, you close the statements. All right. So, with that, we want to give all praise to Yahweh, by Shem, Yahweh, Shah, by Shem, Kadash, double honor to our apostles, and our oldest great millstone who rule well, who still rule well. Peace, blessings, salutations to the elect. Shalom.